All right, folks, I've got to get to bed pretty soon here, so let's get this show on the road. In today's Wrath of Math lesson, we're talking about parallel edges. We're going to talk about parallel edges in multigraphs, and then we're going to talk about parallel edges in directed graphs. Just want to give you an idea of how these things, these parallel edges, are actually defined in these different contexts. So let's see it. I'm sure we're all familiar with the fact that a graph is an ordered pair with a vertex set and an edge set. Of course, we're starting here with simple graphs, and then we can see how we have to introduce some differences to talk about parallel edges. So we'll just start looking at a super simple example of a graph, because that's all we need for our purposes. So the vertex set of this graph just contains these two vertices, u and v, and the edge set just contains every edge of the graph. This graph only has this one edge, which we define as a two-element subset of the vertex set. And the, uh, the two elements that will be in this set are the end vertices of the edge. In this case, that's u and v. And so, of course, we might have a graph with a bunch of different edges. This graph only has one, but we put all those edges into the edge set. Now, since the edge set is a set, and sets don't allow for repetition in what's called a simple graph, which is the graphs we have been talking about and what people often just call graphs. In simple graphs or graphs, we can't have multiple edges joining the same pair of vertices. There's no way to represent that in your typical edge set. If we had another edge joining the vertex U to the vertex V by our definition of edge, it would just be the same exact thing, right? The set containing U and V. And a simple edge set, there's no way that it can capture that information, that there are two identical edges joining U and V. So we have to think about a different type of graph to capture that information. Two edges like this, as you might have guessed, are called parallel edges, or they're also sometimes called multi-edges or multiple edges, which is kind of a a clunky name, in my opinion. Multiple edges. Yes, there, there are multiple edges. Um, and so, in a graph that does allow for parallel edges, which are two edges joining the same pair of vertices, such a graph is often called a multigraph. But with the term multigraph, as with many terms in graph theory, you got to be careful about using them, you got to be careful about reading them, because the definitions of these terms are not universal. So if you read the term multigraph in a paper or in a textbook, make sure you're aware of what they're actually defining a multigraph to be. Some people will use the term multigraph to refer to a graph that allows parallel edges and also allows what are called loops which are edges that join a vertex to itself. Other people will use the term pseudograph for that. So, so just be aware, but our primary focus is just talking about parallel edges here. So let's get back to that. Again, parallel edges are edges that join the same two vertices. So their end vertices are the same. And we'll get to how we actually capture that in just a minute. Of course, if we're allowing parallel edges or multiple edges between the same pair of vertices, we could have as many as we want, right? Forget about two, let's have a third one. Another edge joining U and V. Pretty sweet. Okay, so how are we actually going to capture this information? Well, your typical set doesn't allow for repetition. It can't capture this information. So what we actually need to consider for a multigraph is we need our edge set to be what's called a multi-set. Multi-sets do allow for repetition, they capture that information, and then we can accurately represent a multi-graph, or a graph that has these parallel edges, edges that have the same end vertices. I don't want to get too into multi-sets, but let's talk just a little bit about it so we actually know how this works. We can think of a multi-set as being an ordered pair with some just normal set sort of as its base, and then it also has a function that we can just call m. Now what the function does is it takes the elements 
from this set, in this case we're calling it E, the edge set for our purposes, it takes these elements and it maps them to a natural number. That natural number is called its multiplicity. It's the number of times it appears in the multiset. So for example, for demonstration, let's add another edge and vertex here. Vertex W, and of course, this is the edge, V, W. So we could represent this edge set as a multiset. It's an ordered pair. It's got this edge set E, which again is just a normal set. It's our typical edge set. So in this case, it's got our two distinct edges, UV and VW. We can write those the lazy way, UV, VW, and the order we write the vertices in, UV or VU, does not matter because this is an undirected graph. Order of the vertices doesn't matter. So that's our edge set, this, this set E. The function m takes each edge and maps it to its multiplicity. So m of the edge uv is equal to what? 1, 2, 3. There are three edges joining u and v, so the multiplicity of uv in the multiset is equal to 3, and then of course the multiplicity of vw is equal to 1. There's one edge joining V and W. And excuse me for using some sloppy notation here. Since we're saying that this is the set E, we need sort of a, a different name here. So we could just call the multi-set capital M, and we're saying that this multi-set capital M is this ordered pair. It's got our edge set that has the distinct edges of the graph. There's only two distinct edges of the graph and it's paired with that function m that tells us how many times those edges actually appear. There's three edges joining u and v, there's one edge joining v and w, and that's the multiset, which is, that's how we need to describe an edge set of a multigraph. The edge set of a multigraph is a multiset. Really cool, I think, it's pretty sweet. Now, a, a nice sort of uh, quicker way we can write multisets is instead of having to talk about this function m, we could write the multiplicity as a superscript when we write out the elements of the set. So here, well, let me, uh, let me do it this way. We could just say that our multi-set m is equal to this. We've got our edge set. We put our distinct edges, uv and vw. And then in the superscript of these edges, we just put the multiplicity. So in the superscript of uv, we put three. There are three edges joining u and v, and then vw has a superscript of one, so just like with exponents, we don't write it. Now, of course, this notation could result in some confusion if it was being used in different contexts where you expect exponents to pop up as, you know, a function of arithmetic, but here it's totally fine. So that's another way we can write out a multiset. So we'll say that all one more time. Parallel edges are edges that have the same end vertices. If in a graph we allow there to be parallel edges, that graph is typically called a multigraph. To describe such a graph, a typical edge set won't do. We need a multiset. And the multiset is uh, equipped with this function m that tells us the multiplicity of the distinct edges in the edge set. Really cool stuff. So let's go ahead now and get into directed graphs. I'll go ahead and erase most of this, so rewind if you need to take another look at it, and we'll talk about directed graphs. If you don't know what directed graphs are, sorry, I just thwacked the whiteboard. I hope that wasn't too loud. I'll leave a link in the description to a lesson I just did on directed graphs, so check that out if you're not familiar with them. I'm going to assume you kind of know what they are. All right, so in a directed graph, Again, our typical conventions for simple graphs don't work, right? So we'll start off again, a graph is an ordered pair with a vertex set V and an edge set E. For a directed graph, this is good. This is totally fine. So say we've got these two vertices U and V. In a directed graph, we add direction to our edges. Every edge has a direction. So this edge, we could give it this direction. It's going from U to V. 
Now, of course, to represent a directed edge, which is also called an arc, that's what I like to call them is arcs, and that was a bad set bracket. Let me write that again. We can't represent something like this as a two element subset of the vertex set because this does not indicate the direction of the arc. So as you might, you know, your first thought would probably be maybe we should use ordered pairs. That's exactly what we do. So in a directed graph, I'll just write that up here so we know what we're talking about. Directed graph. In a directed graph, the edge set consists of arcs, which are ordered pairs. So an element of the edge set for this graph would be the arc U V. It starts at U and it goes to V. That's an element of our edge set E. So now parallel edges in directed graphs get kind of interesting because you might see we can have two arcs that have the same end vertices but are also distinct. We can have another arc that goes in the opposite direction but joins the same two vertices. So you know, we were talking about parallel edges before. They're edges with the same end vertices. These two arcs, or directed edges, have the same end vertices, U and V, but they are distinct arcs. One goes from U to V. The other one goes from V to U. And these are really considered distinct arcs. They form a, a two cycle, a cycle of length two. So we, we really do consider these to be distinct arcs. We don't consider it to be, you know, one arc that happens to go both ways. It's typically considered to be two arcs. Now, it may not always be the case that these are going to be called parallel edges, but by some people's definitions, you know, depending on the text, these are parallel edges by definition. They're edges with the exact same end vertices. So just keep that in mind. In directed graphs, we can have what are conventionally considered parallel edges, we can have parallel edges that are distinct because they have opposite direction. But of course, try to keep my breath here, just like, you know, we went from simple graphs where we can only have one, you know, we, can, we can't have duplicates of an edge, and then we consider multi-graphs where we can have duplicates of the same edge. We can make the same step in directed graphs. So what if we do have duplicates of the same exact arc? Say we have another arc that goes from U to V. Now, we can handle this, we just need the same tools we used before. So the edge set of a directed graph is a set of ordered pairs. This, what we're looking at now, is a directed multigraph. That's a directed graph that has duplicate arcs or rather it's a directed graph that allows for duplicate arcs. So a, a simple graph is also technically a multi-graph, but in a multi-graph, we are allowed to have those duplicate edges, or in the case of a directed graph, those duplicate arcs. Quick pause here, I just wanted to clarify that remark. We can think of every simple graph as equivalently being a multi-graph where every edge has multiplicity 1. So in that way, the simple graphs are just a special family of multi-graphs. All right, back to the lesson. So the edge set of a directed multi-graph is a multi-set of arcs. So let's go through the same sort of exercise here real quick to finish up the lesson. We could say that, let's again change this to M for our directed multigraph. That's going to be our edge set. M could be this ordered pair with, let's call it A, our set of distinct arcs, and then a function M that takes each arc and maps it to a natural number, which gives us its multiplicity, the number of times it appears in the graph. So here, let me go ahead and change colors for once in this lesson. Let's use orange. Here, our arc set A, it's a set containing our two distinct arcs. The arc that goes from U to V, from U, uh, from U to V, and the arc going from V to U. That's this other arc, ordered pair, V, U. And then just as before, same sort of thing. M, our function M, will map this arc and this arc to their respective multiplicities. 
So M of the arc UV tells us that that arc UV appears in the directed multigraph two times. So M of the arc UV is equal to two, and then M of the arc VU is equal to one. There's one arc going from V to U, there's two arcs going from U to V. So that is how a directed multigraph works. Pretty cool. So these, these are certainly parallel edges or parallel arcs. They are two identical arcs. They have the same end vertices and they're going the same direction. But again, by conventional definitions, these two arcs, which are distinct, are also parallel arcs or parallel edges rather, uh, because they have the same end vertices. So that's just a little bit about parallel edges, how they're defined, and how we modify the definition of graphs to allow for their consideration. Of course, there are some situations that in order to model them with graphs, we got to allow stuff like this, this multiple edges business. I prefer the term parallel edges because most graphs have multiple edges. Most graphs that we're interested in, you know, they have more than one edge. But what's really meant by multiple edges is that we allow for multiple edges to join the same pair of vertices. Let's wrap it there before I pass out from shortness of breath. So I hope this video helped you get a bit of an understanding for parallel edges. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. Jesus.